Good evening. I'm Peter Armstrong at St. Bryce's Anglican Church in North Bay. Uh, this is a recording of the service of Compline, uh, which we hope you might enjoy um, in this season of Lent uh, 2021. I'm recording this on the first weekend in the season of Lent. Uh, the couple of things briefly, uh, the Psalms, I'm using today are Psalms 47 and 48, and the reading from John 2, 13 to 22. And uh, instead of the, uh, the uh, evening hymn, which I've picked, uh, is Glory to Thee, My God, This Night. Uh, hope that you uh, are blessed and encouraged uh, as we gather together to worship. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Psalms 47 and 48. O clap your hands together, all ye peoples. Sing unto God with the voice of melody. For the Lord most high is to be feared. He is a great king over all the earth. He subdued the peoples under us and the nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, even the glorious land of Jacob, whom he loved. God has gone up with a merry noise, the Lord with the sound of the trumpet. O oh, sing praises, sing praises unto our God. O oh, sing praises, sing praises unto our king. For God is the king of all the earth, singing praises with understanding. God reigneth over the nations. God sitteth upon his holy throne. The princes of the peoples are gathered together with the people of the God of Abraham. For the rulers of the earth belong unto God. He is very highly exalted. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Great is the Lord, and highly to be praised in the city of our God. His holy hill is a fair place, and the joy of the whole earth. On sign of the uttermost parts of the north, the city of the great king. He hath made himself known in her citadels as a sure refuge. For lo, the kings of the earth were gathered and gone by together. They marveled to see such things. They were astonished and suddenly cast down. Fear came there upon them, and anguish is upon a woman in her travail. As when with the east wind thou breakest the ships of the sea. Like as we have heard, so have we have seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God. God upholds the same forever. We have thought on thy loving kindness, O God, in the midst of thy temple. O God, according to thy name, so is thy praise unto the world's end. Thy right hand is full of righteousness. Let the Mount Zion rejoice, and the daughters of Judah be glad because of thy judgments. Walk about Zion and go round about her and count the towers thereof. Mark well her bulwarks, consider her citadels, that you may tell them that come after. For this God is our God forever and ever. He shall be our guide forevermore. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end, amen. The reading from John chapter 2, beginning at verse 13. The Passover of the Jews was, was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove out all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, 
This temple has been under construction for 46 years. Will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture, the word that Jesus had spoken. It's the word of the Lord. And I'll give a little reflection at the end. To thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. To thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For thou hast redeemed me, O Lord, thou God of truth. I commend my spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. To thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Glory to thee. Glory to thee, my God, this night, for all the blessings of the light. Keep me, O oh, keep me, King of kings, under thine own almighty wings. Forgive me, Lord, for thy dear Son, the ill that I this day have done, that with the world myself and thee, I hear I sleep, that peace may be. Teach me to live that I may dread the grave as little as my bed. Teach me to die that so I may triumphing rise at the last day. And may my soul on thee repose and with sweet sleep thine eyelids close. Sleep that may me more vigorous make to serve my God when I'm awake. When in the night I sleepless lie, my soul with heavenly thoughts supply. Let no will dreams disturb my rest, no powers of darkness me molest. Praise God from whom all blessings flow, Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Keep us, the, keep us as the apple of an eye. Hide us with the shadow of thy wings. Preserve us, O Lord, waking and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ to sleep we may rest in peace. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Preserve us, O Lord, waking and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended in heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Blessed art thou, Lord God of our fathers, to be praised and glorified above all forever. Let us bless the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. 
Let us praise him and magnify him forever. Blessed art thou, Lord, in the firmament of heaven, to be praised and glorified above all forever. The almighty and merciful Lord guard us and give us his blessing. Amen. We confess to God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed for our own grievous fault. Wherefore, we pray God to have mercy upon us. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us all our sins and deliver us from all evil. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to life everlasting. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful Lord grant a new pardon and remission of all your sins. Time for amendment of life and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Wilt thou not turn again and quicken us, that thy people may rejoice in thee? O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this night without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come unto thee. Visit, we beseech thee, O Lord, this place. Drive from it all the snares of the enemy. Let thy holy angels dwell herein to preserve us in peace. May thy blessing be upon us evermore. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Be present, O merciful God, and protect us for the silent hours of this night, so that we who are weary by the changes and chances of this fleeting world may repose upon thy eternal changelessness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We will lay us down in peace and take our rest. For it is thou, Lord, only that makes us dwell in safety. The Lord be with you, with thy spirit. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, bless and preserve us. Amen. Here's a short reflection on that passage from John, John 2, 13 to 22. Just when we think we understand the gospel completely, uh, just when we think we've got it all, we can be astonished, challenged, or even shocked by some words and actions of Jesus, which we read. The gospel according to St. John is traditionally read through Lent in both the modern and older lectionaries. Today, we're invited to consider Jesus as he rages in the temple, driving out the screeching and confused animals with a whip, causing absolute disruption, even chaos among the merchants, and bewildering people still further by telling them that the temple will be rebuilt in three days. The Lord's referring to his own resurrection uh, we read, but within the ruin of the temple court, his listeners at the time understandably think he wants to destroy the place of worship, which was 46 years in the making. Is this gentle Jesus, meek and mild, as the old children's hymn goes? No. The Lord Jesus is raging against the commercial abuses in the place of prayer. The words of teacher and songwriter Michael Card, the lamb is a lion that's roaring with rage at the empty religion that's filling their days. What are we to make of this strange, disturbing story? Most of all, it challenges about the state of our worship. We're not gathering in person during this current pandemic, but how do our communities and our places of worship lead us to prayer and devotion? Or what might be in the way? And as usual, our Conceptions of God himself are challenged as we learn of the destruction of the temple. 
do we see the wrath of God against corrupting influences? Are we prepared to challenge injustices and corruptions of any form that we encounter? As we hear once again the story of the destruction of the temple, may we be prepared to see ourselves and God in a new light.